Problem. I'll send you the bill later. <laughs> you know okay, let me see if I can do that. Okay. Oh, yeah, there we go. Okay, you're in charge. I'm in charge. <laughs> oh, it's so gorgeous to see you all. Thank you so much. I can't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> exciting day for you <laughs> oh, yeah it is I'm as high as a kite I've been trying to do some grounding I've got some lovely spray here from um Linda Henneb Linda Hennebury and a beautiful lavender tipperary spray so I'm spraying that to ground us all and create this beautiful space and I've called all you know all of our lovely beings in as well so, um Oh, a bit of feedback. So I just like to, um, oh, first of all, say thank you so much for all your support from the very beginning. I'm seeing some of you who were there when I was going through all of all of that decision making, and oh, uh, yeah, those times, um, and and just all your faces, like a journey of all your faces over the last ten years, just being part of my journey and part of. Rose's choice and I'm just so grateful and I'm going to get really emotional. So I'm going to introduce Nicola, my amazing publisher who really gets that a book is not just a book, it's a, uh, a journey and an energy coming into the world and I'm so grateful that we found each other. So thank you Nicola for uh, guiding me through and being here today. Oh, oh my goodness, I'm getting emotional too. <laughs> Oh, congratulations, like huge congratulations. Um, oh, it just feels so special to have this book in my hands. And I'm so grateful that we connected and we, you know, got to hold space for this book. It's a very special book to make a way into the world. And like you said, you're feeling like high as a kite, but I'm just wondering, you know, how do you feel today as, I know Rose's Choice, like people have pre-ordered it and some people have received their copies already, but now is the point where she's really out there. Oh, I love seeing some of the copies that people have got. <laughs> how does it feel to be a published author and to know that that's it. She's going to go out and have a, a life of her own out in the world now. I know. And I was just chatting to Lee there and just saying, who'd have oh, thought, like, <laughs> um, who'd have thought 10 years ago that Rosa would be birthed this way um, mm. rather than, you know, how, how we all imagine and hope. And um, oh, God, I hope I can Ooh. speak. <laughs> um, yeah, so I've, you know, despite the emotion, the tears, uh, I just, it, it all still feels a bit surreal, but it also, it just feels incredibly sacred and special and the, um, the energy of the book, and I'm not saying that's because of me or anything, but the energy of the messages, and the words and what Rosa has to share, this vision for the future and yeah. to really, you know, have that hope and bring hope to so many, to so many women. Um, yeah, so I'm feeling like really, <laughs> um, uh, but most of all grateful, just so great. 
grateful, grateful, like there's so many messages. And I went to just get my hair done this morning and the hairdressers gave me a little gift and, um, you know, just, just the kindness and the gratitude and the messages from everybody who's been supporting and like really supporting where, you know, it really is that we are all one, we're all connected and we're all rising together. Yeah, so I, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling emotional, very excited, slightly terrified, but mostly excited and just above all, just so grateful. Oh, yeah, all the feels, <laughs> completely normal for... <laughs> For every stage of the book writing journey, I think, but, you know, I often say the transformation um, doesn't end, like once the book is written, like the actual publishing process, and once it goes out into the world, it's a whole other layer of magic. So I'm excited to see what gets activated next. And I wonder if you could tell us a little bit of the story of deciding to write this book um you know when did you get that first nudge that you were meant to be writing about your experience and sharing it in this way um well I can just see lovely Nana here my friend and um maybe Lucinda's joined as well so uh we were we were working <laughs> we were working together and you know I was as I've, as I've written, I was so filled with shame and I didn't, I know I never talked about it. I didn't share it with any, with hardly anyone at all. And I went out for a drink with, with Nana and Lucinda, who I was working with at the time. And, you know, Nana knew the whole story. Nana was there just totally holding me the whole way. And I'm so grateful. And um, it was a few years later and I'd started this big healing journey because of it. Oh. And, um, <laughs> Sorry, gosh. Uh, started this big healing journey because of it. Um, and I got to this stage and, you know, and I'd just been found out, I'd been made redundant as well. So we, we went out for a drink. And Lucinda knew of the, a bit of the story, but because I didn't fully open up, say it was my choice. Um, but she asked me and she's so gorgeous and I felt so safe telling her. Um, and then she said, oh, how do you feel now? And I said, do you know what? I feel really grateful. Rosa's totally changed my life for all the best reasons and um and it shocked me like I because I hadn't thought that before and it really shocked what came out of my mouth then um and we had you know had a couple of bottles of wine so I was very flowing with it um mm. I got on the tube and I just was thinking oh my gosh how can I be how can I be grateful like I was on the floor I thought I'd never be the same person again um I didn't know myself, didn't understand myself, didn't know why all this was happening. Um, and I got to a stage where I, where I could just see, like, oh, my gosh, the gifts in it and the, the life-changing moments of it. So I was on the tube and on this scrappy little bit of paper, I never in a million years thought I'd be grateful for six experience. And the next thing, I just felt this energy coming in. I felt Rosa coming in. Um, and she gave, and this is the image, she, this is the image, the exact image that I saw in my mind on the tube home. And I've managed to translate that to the amazing um, designer uh, with Unbound Press. And um, yeah, so that was the first thing. And she said, we're going to write a book together. And I came home all like full of like, Lee, Lee, I'm going to write a book. I'm going to write a book. It's going to help them. <laughs> And I'm going to help them to just know they don't have to feel the way they feel and that there's so much more than what they than what they're thinking about themselves and there's so much more going on to their story um and that was the excitement and that was the the moment of oh my gosh I'm going to write a book <laughs> I love that it was first like in the pub after a couple of bottles of wine <laughs> <laughs> you know I wasn't sitting all like zen like this no. so, you know, just hanging out with two amazing women I was yeah I think that's what gets like kind of activated when we connect with each other when we're you know connecting with other women um when we're allowing ourselves to share like the aspects of our story that maybe we haven't shared before like it just sparks something off so mm. how powerful is that and mm. actually like Nana's uh Nana's just asked a great question about how like your routine to get the book written um I mean was there a routine how did you actually write it you had the idea but what happened mm -hmm. next so I had the idea and I I knew that Rose's voice wanted to come through but of course I wasn't 
um, I wasn't really channeling then and I was, you know, I hadn't re even heard of mediums before. So I started going to mediums and asking if they would, you know, looking for someone who would channel Rose's messages. And um, everyone I went to said, well, that she's such, such a high vibration that we can't communicate with her. We can only, uh, it's our guides that are showing us. And I was like, oh my God, so how am I going to write Rose's part of the side of the story? Um, and then one day I was just sat there going, you know, and I'd started channeling and everything by then and getting more confidence in that. And um, I just thought, you know what, one day I was sat on the couch and I thought, I'm going to see if I can, if I can channel her. And she came through with this massive message. I was like, oh my gosh. And Lee was out and he came in and it was like, I, I looked really guilty because I was just like, oh, and he said, what are you doing? And I was like, oh, you know, this, you know, <laughs> talking to Rose. Uh, yeah, and yeah, it, yeah, he was a little bit <laughs> Oh, he's got used to it now. Um, so, so then it really started, and then um, I left. I left. I left work, and I had a beautiful summer with the boys. And then thought, right, September, um, I'm going to sit in the park, and I'm going to see what's the messages, what's coming through. So, no, there was no process, no routine. I just thought of a question. I asked Rosa. This is what she was, uh, and that's what she wanted to say. So, I had all this mix of messages. Um, and I had my own story and some of some of the bits I'd already written in vet so th there was no process it was totally unbound uh, <laughs> just this bit here and that bit there um, and I had all of this information and I had all of all of what you know how I was wanting to write my story um, and then all the different uh, you know information from Rosa then other beings mm -hmm. coming in and sharing their their messages so it was like I don't know how to put it all together um, I just have this thing and then it it was because I thought I was writing about journey to motherhood and there to support women and then this massive the messages started to get bigger and bigger and I realized and when she came through with the story of the universe I was like oh oh dear small <laughs> well, you know <laughs> oh dear oh dear what are you asking me to do now <laughs> Yeah, so it's taken a lot of it's a journey, and it's it's like a it's a it's the the writing process is the writing process that comes through. But I think it's that personal journey when you're writing um, is the is the key of it. So you know, I didn't have any mind maps. I didn't. Ha I just thought, oh, that's a question that someone's asked or that's come up for a client. I wonder what the perspective of that is, and what's my thoughts on it. What am I seeing, and what am I being shown? Um, so it was just all yeah coming together like this and then slowly the pattern of the book started to come through so that was kind of the final bit rather than I'm going to do this 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 and this it was like oh that, that's going to come through oh that's going to go somewhere um and I was chatting to Olwyn uh, after one of my other tantrums when another massive message came through about IVF <laughs> all of the energies of the masculine and feminine and what's really going on with creation and I phoned her and was like I need I need to I need a session with you and I need to, you know I need the advice of your guides and what's happening and then it came clear that it was three part book it was part one was the book that I thought I was writing part two you know that more collective journey and part three the real bigger picture so yeah it just unfolded and I think it's trusting what wants to come through um yeah, and just going with it. Well, thank you for trusting. People around to, to keep checking in with. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's quite something to trust that process, Deborah. I know, like, when it's not quite sure how everything's going to fit together. So thank you for doing that. And I remember, like, when we first connected, which was probably around this time last year, I yeah, think. Yeah, it was, yeah. <laughs> um you know quite early on um you were saying well, I'm not sure if this is three different books or you know whether it, it, it can all go in one book so um what's what's it been like to kind of know that this information like both relating to your personal experience but also what's been coming through for us collectively is now going to be shared and going out there into the world what's that like for you mm. um so 
it's taken a long time to share, you know, to share the story, to actually own the story. You know, we have to own our experiences and own, own who we are and how we are within everything that happens. So again, that's something that is, you know, unfolding all the time and you're getting more and more confidence or more, um, or, you know, those feelings of shame, of, mm. of failure, of, of I'm a bad part, all of that stuff that is just hidden in our subconscious mind because of various life experiences and just that's the way we are as humans. Um, really opening up that owning, feeling confident to own yourself and recognizing that your voice and you matter like you matter your story matters and just as that question from Lucinda really triggered like this triggered this whole thing um, but everyone's playing a part in that we're all a piece of each other's puzzle so I think if we're sharing our stories then it will help someone else's story and it will help someone else and help someone else in whatever way that is might not be through a book it might be a you know it's just we are all the connections are off the scale um and for rose's messages going out in the world collectively we are i mean anyone listening here will know about the masculine feminine and and how this is you know creation this balance that we need we can't you know the masculine's got very wound you know this wound and out out of sorts and kind of taken taken over and that's no good for men either you know not this is a it's not a gender thing as we know it's like energies but there's a lot about how the imbalance between those two energies is affecting creation in all ways including becoming a mum and or dad so you know by really helping us to understand that we're we're more than what we think we are that we are creation and to start balancing that creation within ourselves and then that changes the energy collectively and we'll all just we'll all just be fine <laughs> it's all gonna be fine every time <laughs> oh and um oh nan said i love what debbie is saying own our experience feeling confident to own your voice we are all a piece of each other's puzzle yeah absolutely it's like everything is co-created isn't it even if mm. you know it's we feel it's just us who's like writing a book or whatever it is we're always kind of being inspired by everyone else so I love mm. how you talk about that Deborah and as you were talking now I was thinking about the timing like the timing of today and because at different stages of the journey we thought maybe the um Rose's Choice would be released at a different time earlier um, and it's kind of happened that it's today which actually feels like the perfect time of course but what do you think is kind of important about this timing and the world being ready I guess for this book yeah because it was supposed to be well I had in my mind it's got to be a 2020 book because yeah. it's all about the vision and um and then obviously you know it, uh, what happened happened and it and I I just had a slow period on the on the editing and the final bits but what I realized that there was just much more to come through mm. um the book wasn't ready to be seen then uh and I definitely wasn't ready to be seen then either and then it was February and then you know just again other things happened so yeah but the fact it's May is my birthday today. Um, it's, oh. Oh. <laughs> it's, um, and, you know, the book is very much like Mother Mary is very much one of my guides. And it's the, it's the month, it's the month of May. It's the month of May. Um, it's blossoming and, and the, you know, the, the energies have been really heavy, let's face it, but they seem to be opening up. I think people are, ready they're more ready more open and when women come to me you know and they may have only just had that thought of oh I wonder if I can communicate with my baby or I wonder why this happened and it just fills my heart that that so many are open to the experience of they are more than their babies are more than and there's a lot more going on and if you know this yeah if ever, yeah if everyone was that's the screen oh sorry yeah it just it just is 
gorgeous. It's yeah, it's gorgeous. Mm. I can't remember what I was saying now. (laughs) (laughs) It's the perfect timing, basically. (laughs) It's the perfect timing. I haven't forgot the question. Um, (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> well about like the the importance of this timing and um yeah I think um Nina's just said can everyone other than Deborah just mute, make sure that you mute, you're muted um which would be great oh, just for this mm-hmm. part of it fantastic mm-hmm. fantastic so what is your vision for Rose's Choice now Deborah? Mm, I don't know if I've got that far no. I was really thinking about um, what's my vision for Rose's choice? Um, that Rose's vision and Rose's messages reach those who, who it needs to reach. I think the book has its own energy. I know I've said to you before. I feel like my job is done. Like my job mm-hmm. is done. I've written the. I've written the message. The, I've written the book. I've shared her messages. For now, there's probably more. Let's let's not you know limit that. There may be more. There is more. There's more that I haven't put in the book, but. Um, just that it reaches who it's meant to reach and it touches their hearts and helps them to believe in themselves more and find that connection with with themselves and of course their their babies whether here in spirit wherever because it is it is these amazing souls that are showing us and showing us and it's moving from that wound you know that real trauma wound place into okay what am I what are they showing me where's the gift and I think if anyone had said where's the gift in it Mm. you know 10 years ago I'd have probably just like what you know not been very not been very nice in my response perhaps um but eventually we do get to that place where we where there is a reason where where we find that reason um, and we make it mean something about, you know, whatever we want to make it mean, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't, what, what we often tell ourselves of, it's all my fault and blah, blah, blah. That's totally not the case. So even if that helps women turn around, just question, well, maybe it's not, maybe there is something else. Maybe I am more, maybe it's not because of this, this, this. Um, yeah, that was what I'd really love. Mm. And the vision for Rose's Choice, just to reach uh, yeah, reach whoever it's meant to reach and, and make us think about the possibility of a world where there's compassion and understanding and not the judgment and the suppression of voices because of fear, mm. love, basically. <laughs> oh, so very needed at this time. And just like I said, thank you so much Deborah for being courageous and writing this book I mean we had a chat earlier in the week and I was saying like the magic of this book is already rippling out and I was just on Instagram before we came on and um, someone had commented on your post to say what what is this is it a book I I feel like I need (laughs) I need it but I don't know what it is or what it's about I think people are just feeling really drawn to it so I'm very excited to see to see what happens next um and just looking at this comment in the chat box from adriana saying hello deborah and everyone i just want to say huge congratulations and very happy happy birthday listening to your story sounds so emotional and inspirational i'm really touched and grateful for your experience which led to creating that wonderful book wishing you so much success forward with delivering it to all the women who need the great spiritual connection with their babies. Thank you for sharing this party to celebrate with you, sending much love and blessings. Oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> so supportive. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Deborah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Oh my gosh. Oh, so I'm so pleased you're here because otherwise I, I feel I might have just been sat here going, hi. <laughs> Would have been perfect as well <laughs> oh gosh so I wondered you know what, what I was going to do and it was um lovely Vinara who's on this call who um uh oh there you are and she oh so kindly read it through uh but the draft through for me because Vinara also is an author and um and there was a her comment like I think you could just flip through the book and you'll receive a message for 
for the for the day or what you need to hear and I thought oh my gosh so in a couple of my groups or I've been just flicking through the book and seeing what Rosa wants to share with us today so um I'm going to do that and just read a little something and then um then the floor is open if there's any questions um that you want to ask or anything you want to share I'm seeing the gorgeous Karen and Natasha both you feature in the book um I don't know if Jules is here um because I can't see all the full screen but thank you so much for sharing your stories. Oh, you're here. Thank you, Jules, with the twins. Um, yeah, and I, I had images of all, all the, you know, the babies and the, all the running around, but you're all keeping them lovely and, um, well, they just must be nice and calm. We'll ask Rosa to look off while you're on the Zoom. Um, but thank you to all of, all of you who are in the book. So if you wanted to share anything, please feel free. I'm just gonna flick through the book and just see the twins are watching TV, brilliant. Um, and it's so gorgeous meeting the meeting the babies in real life. And I've, uh, you know, obviously Zen lives next door to me. So I see him all the time, little amazing guy he is. Uh, and I've had a cuddle with Oliver um, and I haven't seen the twins in person, but when you meet them in person, there's um, Ollie's on the list, <laughs> when you meet, the babies in person that you've met kind of in the in the energy form oh it's so special there's a real connection and when I when I saw Oliver uh, when I saw Oliver for the first time I think I cried <laughs> just because there was this incredible feeling okay so let's see what does Rosa want to share with us at the moment <sighs> love and sex <laughs> as the weapon of power ah okay so i'll just read this bit so it was that love and sex became a weapon of power that if the women wished to create they could only do so at the will of the male and not at the love of the male for the male had forgotten that they were not only here to serve but also to create they had forgotten that to create they were needed too that love and sex were not handed to them out of pity or with a pat on the head for being a good boy and doing what they were told. They too were the creators of life, but they did not recognize this and they did not choose to remind themselves of this. For all they saw was the power and the magic of the female and all they felt were the scraps of love that were given to the male. The males decided that the only way to bring themselves back into balance was to take what the female had and that was love sex and creation. They began to recognize their own power in this game of life. It was they who began to diminish the sex of the female. They who began to wish to play a greater part in creation by wounding the feminine, by ridiculing the sex they offered, by questioning their power and creativity. And eventually the balance of power shifted. It is this fear of once again being the servant of the female that stops men from seeking out who they truly are at heart, and that is the creators themselves. The ones who carry the seed and the love that brings forth life in the female. But so anguished are they by the thought of their non-creation, by their thought of their non-ability to produce and to birth, they forgot their ability to seed and to nurture. They forgot their ability to create life. And once life has been formed in their role as the teachers of life, of balance alongside the female. It is this remembrance, this honoring of their skills and abilities, this honoring of themselves, of all of who they are and all that they bring to be reassured in their equal and balanced role in the continuing creation of life on earth alongside their female counterparts. It is so important to recognize this balance on all sides as the divine feminine continues to rise, that it is about balance and not power or revenge or being over the male that is being recreated once again here. For the female to step up into her role as the birth of life and the male to step up into his role as the protector of that life, a life that is not taken from for fear of being taken from, but a life that is to be given for the greatest good of all. Yeah, let's just feel into that one. So when you were asking Nika about, about the vision and I got all my words caught up about 
masculine, feminine, you know, Rosa just comes out with the, you know, perfect way of looking at what's happening. Oh, okay. Yeah, let's just, let's, let's feel that for a moment. And I feel like Rosa is very present with us and has been for the last few days with me, which is just gorgeous. And um, see, just feel the energy. And she is beaming her love to each and every one of you. I recognize your power, I recognize your strength. I recognize you. You are the one. The one that can carry this great plan forward. And into all of who you are. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for being. You are all playing a much greater role here than you can ever imagine right now. Hold on to this thought. Hold on to you. Hold on to your love. It's yours and yours alone to share out with the world in whichever way. Your voice is to be expressed. But know that whichever way that is, you are a very precious piece of a very enormous puzzle. Thank you. Just allowing yourself to receive a little blessing. Of life blooming as you create in your own unique way. Being surrounded in a comfiest, coziest blanket and hugged for all you are. Thank you. Thank you. I said to, I said to Lee, it's all right, I won't be doing anything weird like closing my eyes or anything. It just come, it just happens. Feeling good, us. <laughs> I am. Okay. That was beautiful. No, I parked the Honda where Jesse used to be parked. Oh. I don't know who's talking. So I was hoping there was Petra. Oh. oh, Karen. Oh, sorry, am I not on mute? <laughs> <laughs> oh, are you getting, pe you getting petrol? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> I didn't take myself off mute. Anyway, <laughs> humble apologies. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely to hear your voice. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Oh, dear. Thank you. Oh, yes. Gorgeous. That oh, this energy is in the world. You know, this is hope. Oh, so the floor is open. If anyone wants to say anything, I don't know if anyone's brave to share. If you have any questions um, about anything, if you want me to flick through the book for you, um, I don't know, just 
to speak out or write in the chat, whatever you want, if there has any questions. Fine, I'll speak out because I've written in the chat and I've been waving um, and you haven't oh. seen me. So happy birthday. Thank you. Um, I just listening to you, I just I wish there was a way that, you know, because the way you so freely express like the love that you experience, it's such it's such a gift to kind of give yourself that confidence and ability. Because every every time I speak from my heart, I feel like I sound so corny mm -hmm. that I can't do it. But when I hear you, anyway, just thank you for that. The other thing I wanted to say was that maybe um, um, it, it was occurring to me that like it would be really, really, it might be really, really nice for some of the women that you have um, supported to, you know, meet their babies in etheric form and now in material form if they could do some kind of something or other, like not on this Zoom and not in, but just like, a, just 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 to speak to the rest of us, to let us know that this process, this is real, this process works, they were here, then they worked with you and now they're in a different place. That might be something that might be really, really um, inspiring and helpful for the women going forward. You don't have to respond to that now. I'm just saying that was, that would be, that might be something that would be really like, you know, she's she's like tried and tried and tested in a way, if you see what I mean. The okay, end. thank you, Nina. Thank you. And I just want to say it's not because they work with me; it's because they work with themselves. It's because they have their 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 open. All the women open. Oh, look at Oliver! All yeah, I get women. I get that, but it still yeah. would be just you know, kind of like um um inspiring and encouraging for other women who you know haven't haven't had that experience yet of feeling their babies in the ether um i'm just putting it out there as something that might be quite a good uh you know trailing off yeah gorgeous thank you nina we'll see yeah we can we'll put it out there if anyone is um yeah just put it out there thank you lovely to see you ollie and i I just want to thank you, Deborah. Aww. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you for helping us meet up in person. And, uh, congratulations on the lovely book, Hanlon. Happy birthday. Oh, <laughs> thank you. I better let him go, but I just wanted him to say hello. <laughs> Oh, he's he's got other things to be getting on with. Be free. Off you yes, go. that's one one thing that people need to know is once these babies are birthed, <laughs> their powerful energy continues. <laughs> yes, yeah, and that's and why I think uh, yeah, I'm we need new tools on how to raise these babies. So <laughs> they know what's well, another book for you. I know, and they they create the space around them. You know, it's the the old way of parents being in charge, and and that's you know that's never been the right way to be honest. Um, but they these kids create the space around them. They're just they're so powerful. Uh, they know exactly what they want, and like, why are you asking me to do that? That makes no sense. Mm. And you think actually, no, it doesn't make any sense. You're right. So the more we can come into balance with the, with with our kids and realize they know so much more than us. They have less they programs do. that are getting in the way um, and safety and sanity aside, you know, be free. This is uh, what Rosie says. Imagine a world where all the children are free, free of, free of our traumas, basically. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, it's gorgeous. Yes, we Thanks. need to step back as parents and um, uh, think differently and allow yeah. them to, to show us um, a different way, don't we? Yeah, I also Easy. wanted to thank Rosa because she, Rosa came with me on my um, embryo transfer when I had IVF, and she was in the room when Oliver was transferred. So thank, thank that's why I'm getting emotional. <laughs> so I uh, want to thank her as well. Oh, um, and uh, yeah, sorry, and thank I'm losing my voice. <laughs> oh, you're doing amazing. Thank so you. So big hug and lots of love, and also love to everyone else here um, and to Alwyn because um, you introduced us and yes. thank you <laughs> I know thank you thank you and the biggest hug and I can't wait to when we can see each other again and um, just to say that you know to talk about it, we're all co-creating it was Olwyn who knew Karen and it was Olwyn's guides who who said you need to go and see Deborah Kilby <laughs> she did and she did, she did. I, I, I just couldn't um 
I was already communicating with, with Oliver, but I just couldn't get there. And I now know from working with the spirit babies myself that when you're going through it, your emotions get so much, you know, they're in the way of blocking it. And uh, you need that help. And thank goodness <laughs> you do what you do, Deb and, um, and Owen, of course. Um, to let me get out of the way and to know what it was that I needed to do. How, you know, I was told I needed to go deeper and I thought, how on earth do I do that? I've done this work, I've put the baby there, he's been communicated, what, you know, what, what is it? And you showed me um, what it was I had to do, that I had to raise my vibration to that of his and um, that's so important. So I go around telling people that <laughs> myself now. Um, because I thought, what, you know, what is it I, you know, I've done so much, you know, what is it I'm not doing, and, um, you know, he, he was trying, his best things were flying out of cupboards, I was having, he was trying to tell me, <laughs> and my emotions were getting in the, in the way, so um, thank you for, for helping with that, and he's proof that it's possible, and not to give up, um, not to give up hope, oh. so thank you. So beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. And it, and you know, it is, it is that it's, it's the self, it's the self belief because our belief gets knocked and knocked and knocked time and time and time again. And for so many of you, an awful lot of times. And you had 15 years of being knocked um, and, but still knew he was, still knew he was there. So it was you recognizing that power. And I think that's, that's it you know women where this incredible portal of love that is has the power to invite in nourish and birth these amazing children into the world and we've forgotten that it's just hidden under lots of lots of stuff um and the more we you know just open ourselves up to the magic and self-belief uh miracles magic can I just say, Debbie, firstly, oh, happy hello. birthday. Hello. Hi, guys. Hello. Nice to meet you all. Debbie, congratulations today on your book launch. I'm so proud of you. Um, you're an amazing woman. Um, I've got such a big story, but I don't think I've got enough time to tell it. I just need to say that this woman has been brought into my life for a reason. And, you know, listening to her on here, her voice, even just thinking about Debbie will make me cry because she just brings out these beautiful emotions to me all the time. Um, she's just been such a blessing to me. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, so, so. Okay, so I met Debbie probably about 10, 11 years ago as a neighbour. Um, never knew who she was supposed to be in my life. She was just a neighbour. But she's so much more. And uh, she's helped me to... To dig deeper and to keep learning to heal myself you know I have the power to heal myself and you know back to my fetus stage my childhood my my childhood energy and I've been working on that over some time and I'm still working on it right now um but Debbie's allowed me to find the space to do that that I never knew that I had um and I never thought that I was going to have more children, you know, not because of any medical reasons, just because of psychological reasons. Um, and some of my history and some of my past and, you know, my upbringing. And uh, being around Deb, she just gave me all these tools that I never knew that I should be using. And she's allowed me to come to a place where I never thought I'd find love, never thought I'd have another baby, never thought that my baby would be so beautiful and such a big, beautiful spirit. And uh, I just want to say thank you. I mean, there's so much more I can say. I'm probably just a bit emotional, I'm not thinking very straight, but I just want to say thank you so much. And, you know, you, my journey was real and you have been a big part of my journey. Um, and you know exactly how you've done that. Maybe I'm not expressing myself very well on this platform, um, but I just want to say thank you so much. And I have so much love and gratitude for you. You are such my sister from another, and I love you so much. So thank you, thank you so much. My baby's not here. I've left him with grandma, so he didn't interfere with the Zoom call, but Zen is my son. And he's uh, he was being not brought here. He chose to be here. 
and you'll probably read that in the story in Rose's Choice. I'm, just, you know, I'm also grateful that Debbie asked us to be part of her story. Um, so please, I'm, I look forward to you guys reading that. And yeah, sorry, I'm I'm speaking so I don't even know if I'm talking very well. I'm so sorry. I'm just a bit emotional, but I just love you so much, Debbie. Thank you so much, and I appreciate you. And God bless everybody else. Oh, it's perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I know it takes a lot to speak out and we've kept each other going through lockdown. So thank goodness for mm -hmm. you next door to just help, you. help each other through the craziness. Mm -hmm. And thank you. And I don't know if Mags is still on the call, but we will, um, Natasha was going to come to one of the retreats in Ireland that I run, Divine Feminine Retreats that I run with, um, with the amazing Mags Cross and Hilary. And uh, something happened with the passport she couldn't come but you gave me some crystals and stuff and and Zen was there he was in he was at the retreat I can't describe it we still don't know exactly what he was doing there. but his energy just came it was absolutely unbelievable so um yeah there's such a beautiful connection and thank you and I am so grateful that you're right next door <laughs> I get lots of cuddles from you and from Zen it's brilliant <laughs> thank you Holly. Hi, Ramya. Oh, Lovely yes. and congratulations. Thank you. From the time the call is on, I'm, I'm so emotional as well. I think uh, everyone are actually. <laughs> so can you read a page from Rosa's Choice? Uh, message from Rosa for me, please. Yes, absolutely. Thank, Thank you. you. Oh, it's funny. Look, I've just put on the test. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> um, okay. So, uh, it is this jigsaw of life coming together and apart, each forming a perfect piece in a perfect puzzle. And so it is that these precious souls here in spirit do choose to come together at a certain time and at a certain place and at a certain moment in order to fulfill and fill this world, world with life and all of life. For those for whom conception has not yet come, do not fear and do not worry, for there is always something bigger to be found here on this journey. For those for whom conception was just this moment in time, and you feel that this moment did not affect the future, as I have spoken of above, yet again, do not fear, for this moment of conception no matter how, when, for whom, or for how long, truly does shift and change the sands of time in your own world and beyond. So please, we ask you to acknowledge these brave spirits who are willing to come to spread life with you and add their flavor to the world, no matter for how long this may be. To acknowledge those spirits who choose to enable this moment of creation to happen, to create the energy of life in whichever way that may be. For whatever you may think and feel about life, it is indeed life you have chosen, and it is indeed life that these baby spirits are seeking. It is then up to you which picture of life you choose to present to them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. I think that's quite, I think that's perfect for you. Yeah. Yeah. All right, sending you a big hug. Thank you. It resonates. I'll be in India one day. I've always but, wanted to go. <laughs> All right, gorgeous. Thank you and thank you yeah, for everything. Thank you. <sighs> okay. Oh, Sita. Oh, look. More babies. Hi, everybody. Um, I just want to say congratulations, Deborah, and happy birthday. Um, and uh, this little boy here career is proof from all the help Deborah did you know I worked with her so thank you so much and and just to let Nina know that here he is the live story as well and it was yeah he's a miracle and because of Deborah all because of Deborah and the help in in getting here so thank you Deborah and good luck with the book and I'm sure it's going to go places and get to everybody that needs to hear it and read it and know about you and yeah so much love for you oh thank you it's so gorgeous and thank you and it's lovely to see Kavir oh my gosh we will see each other we're not that far away either so soon soon 
Um, and I will never, ever forget that moment. <laughs> you know, the moment I'm talking about and how absolutely sacred that was. That was like, right, that is, we know, we know. He's in, he's coming. It's so beautiful to see you here. And you have your own book coming out very soon. Well, in the process of. So, um, yeah, good luck for that. I look forward to, look forward to being on your book launch. Gorgeous. Thank you so much, Sita. Oh, hi, Renara. Right. Happy <laughs> birthday, first <laughs> thing. Uh, so proud of you, Deborah. I remember meeting you on Carl's course and thinking, oh, she's, she's pretty special. And then again, <laughs> Sharon and the kind of ooh, this 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 woman has a great energy um something powerful and great but so kind i think that's that's the lovely thing about you deborah you you're just so so kind um but i just wanted to say so yes i mean uh, so the book i find that um and indeed i i, I was privileged and honored to be able to read it before it became in this beautiful book form but if you just open it anywhere, as well as it being totally marvellous, it also makes you cry, which, but in a very good way. I've, so I've, I've caught myself twice and then I actually have to just, okay, just quietly put it back down again, just for the moment. Um, uh, but yes, and I, I know I, I'm going to buy a book for my daughter, um, but I just thought you'd like to know Colour mirrors here. I'm a colour mirrors person, and the date you've chosen for your for your book to be birthed. Um, the numerology goes twenty because today is twenty, um, and all the numbers of today twenty plus five plus twenty twenty one makes twelve, um, and then it reduces to three. So twenty in the colour mirror system is awakening. It's the awakening bottle. Twelve in the colour mirror system is heaven on earth. Oh. And then that reduces to three, which is Jupiter. And that's all about the really big thing that, that the beautiful coral is all about is self-acceptance and self-compassion and letting go of judgment. So we have awakening, heaven on earth and self-compassion. And I think that's rather a lovely message from Rosa, is it not, in, within the, within the colour mirrors? So... That's my my little gift to you today. And just to say how helpful you were with right at the genesis of writing my book. You would just, so as you say, we're all a piece of each other's jigsaw uh, puzzle and all so important. And I I honor you, Deborah and Rosa, sorry, and Rosa. Oh, Renara, thank you so there much. You okay. I love those color awakening. Yes, this is, this is yeah awakening absolutely and in rose's soul pan anyone who's done a soul pan with me or knows about soul pan rose's um soul destiny her life purpose energy is the energy we call the 88 which is all about bringing heaven to earth creating heaven on earth he heaven earth is already heaven we just can't see it for all the stuff right now but that's where we're heading and creating this place where we all feel safe and feel more joy less fear so thank you. That's really special. Thank you, Ravana. Okay, okay. Bridget just wants to say happy birthday. Deborah, can you hear me under? Oh, thank you. I can't. Oh, I can't see. I can't see. Can't see. She's waving. Oh, there. Hi, Bridget. Oh. <laughs> oh no. so, happy birthday and thank you for uh, from us. Um, you've been, uh, yeah, so, so so genuine, such a support. Um, I, you know, I'm kind of new to all of this, but, you know, I, I, you know, I think it's about when someone was asking there about like, you know, the beliefs and the patterns of beliefs and the limiting beliefs and releasing all them, which is what you helped me with. Um, and then trusting in myself to go to London, to fly over and back to, you know, just take my own power like you said even though I was doing IVF to ground myself you know while doing it um, and like you know what I really remember is just trusting you know really 
having no fear, you know, just trusting and going with it. And everything was flowing and everything was falling into place easily. And it was enjoyable, um, which is what I didn't experience before I met you. So um, that's, I suppose, for me, what stands out. Um, um, and it's like you said, the, it's the inner work, it's releasing stuff. It's, um, it's yeah, I, <laughs> that's all that, that comes to mind. And then I suppose for me is, um, you know, like that, the, I think the night before I was doing the, um, the transfer, I listened in in London, I listened into one of your meditations and it was like the, the goddess of Bridget coming through and my granny was called Bridget and I was like, right. <laughs> I was like, if, if I have a girl, I'll, I'll call her Bridget and, and, I, and I stuck to that, you know, so um, it's just been super, really, the whole thing. So thank you. Thank you for all your support and um, thank you for sending me the book. It's fab. I, I, I open it at, at random pages and, and, and read it and it's fascinating. So I have a lot to, to get through, but thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. It's so gorgeous to see you. And look at this gorgeous face. Hello, darling. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I remember you. You're so, oh, she's so gorgeous. Thank you so much, Jules. And thank you for sharing your story in the book. And thank you to Bridget and... Um, uh, and Finnan, Finnan, I can never pronounce his name right. Sorry, Irish name. Finnan, yeah. Finnan, yeah. Um, yeah, for showing up and showing showing us the way. Because let's face it, they're guiding. It's their guidance that's helping us to see what you know where what needs to happen, what they're after. So, um, thank you. It's gorgeous to see you. Thank you. Okay, so, wow. Um, and, uh, can I just jump in, Deb? Is that allowed? Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I forgot about is you. That, is that allowed? <laughs> I've unmuted myself. <laughs> I just want everyone to know, that, uh, and I'll get emotional as well, I'm sure. But... Um, yeah, you're making I, me cry. I know, stop it. <laughs> to write this book, to write this book is a miracle in itself about our beautiful angel. But to write it with me, Max and Samuel thrashing, bashing, crashing around the house is, uh, is, is, is pretty amazing. And you're incredible. We know you're incredible. Hearing everybody else say it is beautiful. And uh, yeah, I'm just extremely proud of you. And that's it. I can't really say much more. <laughs> oh that's all you thanks. need to know and i'll be down in a minute with a glass of champagne i know it's there it's in the fridge oh my god and thank all you lovely ladies for turning up i was reassuring debbie this morning that people will come people turn up as uh, as regularly we do so thank you very much deb i'm proud of you i love you thank you thank you just thank you you know you know, you've been on the, you've been on apart from the losses, we often don't think about the partners because we're so in our own, you know, stuff, but you know, the partners are also grieving and then having to deal with me. And, and also, you know, when the world started opening up, you were like, are you sure you're all right? <laughs> um, and we're just allowing me to grow and that's it. That's the divine masculine right there just allowing you to grow into who you are with the support, with the love, with the, you know, with the taking the Mickey, with the, oh, just with everything. And, um, oh my gosh, thank you. You're only upstairs. <laughs> See you in a minute. <laughs> thank you. Oh. You okay. just have that champagne. You deserve that champagne. It's, just, oh. it's nearly there, Deborah. Oh. I know. Oh my gosh. So I think I think that's gorgeous. I think I think everyone everyone's everyone's good. Um yeah, so I don't know. I'm really rubbish at goodbyes or farewells or but thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for being here being part of the journey in all sorts of ways and and this is life when we come together when we help each other when we're compassionate and 
see what's going on with someone if we could all see the baggage that we carry we'd kind of help each other lift that baggage off a little bit more um rather than the judgment and everything else that we live in sometimes um and yeah i started this with gratitude and i'm ending it with even more gratitude and thank you and thank you to rosa and whew, and all the babies and all the amazing souls who chose not to stay and who are waiting to arrive because they are waiting to arrive um with so much love okay thank you thank you oh. um yeah i don't know nicola did you want to say anything just just thank you again um yeah thank you for trusting like every step of the way and bringing this incredible book into the world it's just an honor to to know you and i'm so grateful and yeah thank you to everyone who shared today it's just been so beautiful i'm in bits <laughs> i think we all need some champagne now <laughs> thanks Deborah. oh yeah and women's voices women's yeah. voices yeah let's do it let's do it <sighs> okay thank you thank you thank you so much and I will see hopefully many of you soon and and others soon as well. Okay. Big hugs. To you. Thank you, Deborah. Thanks, Deborah. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. 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 Thanks, Bye. Thanks, Bye. Bye. Oh, how do I come out of here? Oh, oh. No. Enjoy your day, but Deborah. Oh, thank you so oh, much. Oh, my gosh. Well done. Have a lovely day. Bye. Oh, you're beautiful. Thank oh, you, well. Alison. You next. Well, bye-bye. <laughs> Take care. Thank you. Oh, Anne-Marie, thank you. Be thinking of you. Yeah.